Module 2, Part 2 of the Working Environment. Objective, discuss safety measures to prevent falls, identify your role as an aid in handling a fire emergency, and three, list the safety precautions for oxygen therapy. Fall. Most accidents in a nursing facility are from incidents of falling. Many are caused by lost abilities due to diseases or muscle weakness, but also these can occur from unsafe environments, such as liquid being on the floor. When a resident first comes to a facility, nursing staff determine their risk for falls and then care plan interventions to prevent them. A common reason people fall is they become tired of waiting for someone to come and help them. Try your best as a CNA to answer all call lights promptly, even if it means just letting them know that someone else will soon be in to help them. All debris, including spills on the floor, should be removed immediately so the environment is safe. When in doubt about a resident's ability to transfer with one person, always ask for additional help from another CNA or nurse. Yikes, I think I'm falling. Whether it's yourself or the resident, do not prevent the fall. Sometimes things just happen and residents begin to fall. More than likely, you will not be able to keep them from falling, but you can help ease them to the floor to prevent traumatic injury. This is still considered a fall, so you will need the nurse to look over the resident before they get up. If at all possible, do not leave a resident alone when they have fallen, but call out for help to get the nurse's attention. The resident should remain in the position in which they fell. Once the nurse examines the resident and assesses for injury, you may be told to assist the resident up off the floor. Burns and scalds are another common concern in nursing facilities. Water temperatures for bathing should be 105 degrees Fahrenheit or cooler, as residents may not be able to sense if the water is too hot for them. Some residents like this with paralysis or neuropathy won't think the water is as hot as it truly is. Warm and cold packs, we use those for residents that may have discomfort or inflammation. We want you to always remember to wrap those packs in a towel or pillowcase to prevent skin from being compromised. It gives a good barrier. We apply those for 20 minutes at a time and then at least 20 minutes off of the skin at a time. Residents are allowed to drink hot liquids, such as coffee, and enjoy so. Residents who may be at risk of spilling hot liquids on themselves, perhaps from physical disability or because of dementia or weak strength, should be supervised when they have hot liquids. Sometimes an ice cube or a little bit of cool water put in that liquid may cool it down so it's not as hot and dangerous. If a resident is going to drink hot liquids, it is best to serve them when the resident is sitting down. Another way to prevent burns is by conducting good incontinent care. Incontinent care is the proper technique to cleanse the perineal and buttocks of a resident if they soil themselves. The acid from their body fluids may cause a chemical burn such as in an infant who has diaper rash. Choking prevention. Choking is a very real concern for residents. Some residents are susceptible of swallowing problems due to a stroke or perhaps they have poor fitting dentures. To help prevent choking from occurring, residents are encouraged to and or assisted to sit up in a 90 degree angle if possible. They are encouraged to eat or be fed slowly Take sips of liquids in between bites. Food should be taken in small bites to allow for proper chewing and then swallowing. Here are a few causes of choking. The first example is when a resident has a decreased gag reflex. The gag reflex is the body's normal response to objects entering the throat before the body is prepared for it. An individual who has had stroke may not have a normal gag reflex and therefore the body does not have time to prepare to redirect food into the stomach. And instead, food may go down into the trachea, known as your air tube, and it becomes lodged, causing choking. Poor fitting dentures also would make chewing very difficult, and the possibility of swallowing big chunks of food would be increased. 
Finally, decreased cough reflux. Most individuals that swallow wrong and have food go down into the trachea have the ability and strength to cough and force the object up, like you and I. But as we age, this becomes more difficult because it requires much more strength than what an elderly person will have. Skill number five in your current skills checklist book talks about the procedure for choking. You must determine first if the person is truly choking. This is accomplished by asking some questions. Can you cough? Can you speak? Yell for help, but remain with the choking victim. Some people may use the universal sign of choking by having their hands grasped around their throat. If the individual is still able to cough, have them continue to attempt to clear their airway. Once the cough is very quiet or weak or their complexion starts to turn blue, the Heimlich should be initiated immediately. Always follow your facility procedure. We're moving next to body mechanics. Body mechanics is the way the parts of the body work together when a person moves. We want to move safely. If we use good body mechanics, this will help save energy and prevent injury and muscle strain. The alignment of our bodies can be thought of as keeping our back straight so if we drew a line straight down the center of the body, we would mirror each side exactly. We would be symmetrical. The base of support provides the foundation that supports an object. If we have a wider base of support, we become more stable. This is why we encourage a wide base of support of at least 12 inches between our feet when we lift something or someone. The center of gravity is the point where the weight is concentrated. When we stand, the weight is centered in our pelvis. As we lower our center of gravity, it gives us a more stable base of support. This means when we lift, we should bend our knees to lower our center of gravity and thus decrease our chance of falling. Also, when carrying objects, it is wise to carry them close to the body of the center of gravity. Lifting heavy objects from the floor. Where are your largest muscles located? you answered your upper thighs, known as your quads, then you're correct. Our back muscles are much weaker than our quads. Proper lifting of an object from the floor means lowering your center of gravity, having a wide base of support, keeping the back straight, and lifting with your legs. Here are techniques that will help prevent muscle strain and injury. Raise beds to safe working level. Stand close to the object, stand with a wide base of support, Push or slide objects rather than lifting or pulling. Use muscles of upper arms and upper thighs to lift. Bend at the knees instead of at the waist. One of the easiest techniques is always to raise the bed to waist level. This will prevent undue stress and strain from bending over to help a resident while they are in bed. Restraint. Restraint is a physical or chemical way to restrict voluntary movement or behavior. Nursing facilities are able to use physical restraints and chemical restraints only with a doctor's order. Notice that in long-term care, side rails are considered a restraint and are not used a lot. Hospitals, on the other hand, use side rails continuously. In this course, we teach the use of upper side rails. Physical restraints can be classified in three different types. Type 1 is not applied to the body, such as the upper side rail. Restraints are considered one of the last resorts that should be initiated to an individual. Facilities need a lot of documentation on what alternatives have been tried before they can utilize restraints. This is not an all-inclusive list of the negative effects that may occur from restraints. Loss of dignity can also be added to this. Depending on the type of restraint, bruises, cuts, and pressure injuries, formerly called pressure ulcers, can occur, as well as reduced blood circulation. Muscle atrophy means the shrinking of the muscle, or muscle loss. Bone mass loss is also a potential negative effect. So what are restraint alternatives? As mentioned before, these need to be implemented first before we can move to getting a doctor's order for a restraint. 
Prior to administering a chemical restraint, which would be a medication, the nursing staff need to try at least three alternatives and document whether they were effective or not effective. Chemical restraints are typically antipsychotic and anti-anxiety medications. After reviewing this list of alternatives, can you name any additional alternatives that may work? If a resident is placed in a physical restraint, by law, they are to be released from their restraint for at least 15 minutes every two hours. Staff are to ensure that the residents are not cutting off circulation, excuse me, the restraints are not cutting off circulation that would cause a change in color or cause the body part to swell. While restrained, comfort measures such as pillows and music can be provided. Keep in mind that restraints are never to be used for staff convenience. Oxygen is considered a form of medication. Therefore, nursing assistants should not be turning off oxygen or adjusting oxygen levels. As a nursing assistant, you should be observing the nasal area where oxygen is applied for dryness and possible redness behind the ear. Report changes to the nurse. Oxygen does not work for the individual if the tubing is kinked or the person is laying on it. Always check the tubing prior to walking away from someone that is wearing oxygen. Oxygen equipment. Expect to see an oxygen concentrator at a long-term care facility. You should be given instruction on how it works and work your role in working with it. Nursing assistants can place the nasal cannula on a resident. The prongs of the nasal cannula should be curved down, not up, when placed in the nostril. Fire. Fire needs three components to be present for it to function. Heat, fuel, and oxygen. Heat makes the flame, and fuel is the object that burns. Oxygen is the gas that will keep the fire burning. Here are some potential causes of fire that may occur in a long-term care facility. We as nursing assistants play an important role in observing for frayed or damaged electrical cords and overloaded electrical plugs. If you observe these items, report it immediately to your nurse or supervisor. A fire plan we have is the RACE acronym. Every nursing facility has a fire plan. Most facilities do incorporate the RACE acronym. First action of RACE is to remove the residents and other people from danger. Once that is done, the activation of the alarm is needed. Step three is to try to contain the fire by eliminating as much oxygen as possible. This is done by closing doors and windows if possible. Don't try to be a hero if the situation is not safe. Lastly, we extinguish the fire. If small enough, we may be able to evacuate people to a different area of the facility versus sending everyone outside. Follow what the charge nurse orders. The PASS acronym is another common acronym. It's a great way to remember how to use a fire extinguisher. Starting with the letter P, pull the pin on the fire extinguisher. This will not be hard to do and the pin should easily be removed. A is for aiming the nozzle at the base of the fire while spraying. The fire is not located in the flames, but is at the base. S is for squeeze the handle. And the last S is for sweeping the nozzle back and forth at the base of the fire. Most fire extinguishers do not last very long. Do not be surprised if you exhaust the extinguisher in 20 seconds or less. Each facility has a policy and procedure for each potential disaster, ranging from a storm plan to a fire plan. As an employee at a nursing facility, you will, re you will be responsible for following the policies and procedures. Yearly reviews will be conducted to revisit each plan in case it would need to be implemented at some point. Thank you for listening. We'll go on to the next part in just a moment.